Hey, did you know Hyplet Store makes the coolest merchandise just for you? Place your order today as everything is 50% off and get completely free shipping no matter where you are. Hypletstore.com, there's a bit of everything for everyone. History Channel's Pawn Stars is the network's highest rated show and the second most popular reality TV show altogether. Since its debut in July of 2009, fans have been following the daily goings on in the Harrison's world famous gold and silver pawn shop, but there are a few things that viewers don't know about the show, which has led to many viewers. If you want to find out what's happening behind the scenes of the show and whether everything is really what it appears to be, then here are 10 Pawn Stars myths explained for you. The world famous gold and silver pawn shop is actually not managed by Rick or the old man, but by Travis Benton since the guys from Pawn Stars can't work the counter anymore due to their fame and Nevada strict privacy laws. Fans of the show would constantly try to take photos and video of the reality TV stars, which could violate the privacy of others in the shop by accidentally taking a shot of them. The show is really shot in the shop though, only privately and customers who appear on it have to sign releases and agree to be extras first. When shooting pawn stars, parts of the Harrison's pawn shop is temporarily closed to the public, which can interrupt the real business and mean that sales suffer because of the show. According to the shop manager Benton, one out of a hundred people who come to the shop are actually there for business, while the others are simply fans of the reality show. Between Monday and Friday, the crew films two to five times per day, and Benton usually doesn't know what is planned for the day until the night before around 6 p.m. Yet, the gold and silver pawn shop will certainly not have to close down anytime soon, since it has four to five thousand visitors every day, and the pawn star's popularity will surely draw many more visitors to the store in the future. Since only 1% of the pawn shop's visitors are actually customers, the store has become more of a tourist attraction in recent years. Rick has claimed that his gold and silver pawn shop competes with the Welcome to Las Vegas sign for the number one non-gaming tourist attraction in Las Vegas. And he seems to be right. According to online reviews, the line in front of the shop extends down to the sidewalk and visitors often have to wait 2-3 to three hours to get a glimpse of the pawn stars, without any guarantee that they actually will. If you're lucky, one of them will come out from the back where they produce the show to sign autographs for a while, but it really is a game of pure chance, just like most other things in America's gambling capital. Rick Harrison actually talked about making a reality show about the pawn shop for years before Pawn Stars got eventually picked up. He stated he always knew that TV exposure would do their business good, and since he is a media whore, according to himself, he agreed to put the show on Comedy Central's Insomniac in 2003, as well as appear in a 2001 PBS documentary, before pitching the idea of an entire reality show about the day-to-day -day business of the world-famous gold and silver pawn shop. Pawn Stars was originally intended to air on HBO and they even developed a pilot, but Harrison didn't like their angle of focusing on the more depressing side of the pawn business, so he turned to left field productions and the rest is history. Despite his troubles with the law, Chumley is by far the most popular pawn star and many tourists buy the Chumley merchandise. But he wasn't actually cast on the show at first, as it was originally supposed to be a family gig until the producers decide to look for a fourth cast member. As Chumley put it, there was 10 others employees in the shop and they were looking for a fourth person to put in the show, and I thought to myself, well, I've known these guys my whole life. We have good camaraderie, and I'm just gonna be funny and joke with them like we would normally do, and not get nervous in front of the cameras, and it kinda worked out. And when he says kind of worked out, he means that he has since become a celebrity, as well as a multi-millionaire, and possibly the most hated person among the other nine employees of the shop. ...with the 1716 book on the trial of witches. And I just have no idea what it's worth. So I'm calling... While the way the Pawn Stars act when negotiating with customers may seem random, it is all part of their tactics. After Rick makes an offer, for instance, he will often stay silent until the seller responds, regardless of how long it takes. Unskilled hagglers often become uncomfortable with the silence and will either accept the offer or try to lower their price considerably. My name is Olivia Black and I work the night shift at the Gold. In 2011, Olivia Black joined the cast of Pawn Stars as the Gold and Silver Pawn Shop's night shift employee. She first appeared in the episode Less Is More of Season 5, and Chumley was the one who worked double shifts in order to train her. Because of her good looks and her enthusiastic personality, she quickly became popular with the show's fans and helped increase the viewership. 
However, only a year later, she was fired after nude photos of her surfaced, revealing her previous career as an adult model. She was actually just kind of fired in front of the cameras though, and Harrison later explained that he never actually fired her. It is just the production company did not want her working there anymore. What she does in her personal life is, well, her business. Black allegedly sued the production company to get back on the show, which she denied. She did petition to return to the show, however, stating that she didn't think that fans would care as they are a lot more open than they are given credit for. She never came back on the show though, and eventually even left her job at the pawn shop a few months later to resume her modeling career. And it is here. The best part about the job is just learning everything in the pawn business. I had no idea all of the things that went into it. Do you know why Rolexes hold their value? No, I don't. Okay more times than you even realize you've heard this particular guitar probably true yeah yeah okay. so what do you think it's worth easily sixty seventy thousand dollars this is although the pawn stars have been in the business for a long time and know a lot there are still many things that they don't know which is why they often call experts to help in appraising items or to verify their authenticity this saves them from buying fakes and from paying too much for something that is not actually what it appears to be However, contrary to popular opinion, the experts are not only there to help the pawn shop owners and employees, but can also ensure that the customers get a fair price for the items that are worth a lot more than they or the pawn stars initially thought. It's a cool bike, but since Steve McQueen owned it, it's... <laughs> it makes it that much more, right now. I called the guys from the pawn shop today to come out and look at my... We often see the cast members of Pawn Stars being really enthusiastic about certain items when interviewed in the absence of a seller, but then acting much more reserved when actually checking the item out. And there is a simple explanation behind this behavior. While Rick might really want something like a Steve McQueen's motorcycle in Season 4 for instance, he doesn't want the seller to think that the shop might need it, thus giving him the upper hand in the negotiations. This might break their hearts sometimes, but the guys know that they have to put the pawn shop's needs above their wishes. So how did you uh, get this bike? Me and my dad purchased this bike at the Steve McQueen estate auction. And I've got all the paperwork from the auction itself. Steve McQueen was the ultimate man. It often seems like the Pawn Stars make a really low first offer, even after an expert has appraised an item and estimated its value. This is not because they are unfair though, it is simply another common tactic that experienced negotiators all over the world use to get the best deal possible. The opening bid is called a lowball offer and is made to force the seller to react as well as to test how committed they are to their position. The lowball offer often prompts the seller to dramatically lower their asking price, especially if they're inexperienced. So, next time you try to sell something, make sure to do some research as to how much your item is worth, then set a strategy and stick to it to get a good and fair deal. Hey, check out the Hyplet store today and choose between some cool hoodies, t-shirts, accessories, backpacks and more. Hypletstore.com, there's a bit of everything for everyone. Thank you so much for watching guys and don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you're new. Also don't forget to turn that post notification bell on so you never miss our uploads. Thank you again for watching and we'll see you next time.